What's up everyone, I'm Disclaim, and today we are starting a Renegade Platinum strategy guide series. Renegade Platinum, or Ren Plat for short, is a ROM hack of Pokemon Platinum created by no other than Drayano. The game includes changes to Pokemon, trainer battles, quality life changes, and much more. Whether you're starting off on your very first Pokemon journey or you're a seasoned Pokemon master, this guide will help you play through Renegade Platinum and conquer the Sinnoh region. This guide will be rolled out into a series of individual episodes. That way viewers can pick the episode that aligns with where they are in their own play. Playthroughs. I invite you to watch the introduction to our guide coming up very shortly, as it will cover the vision and the direction of this guide. Once again, a very special shout out to Drayano who created this amazing ROM hack. This is by far my favorite. Without further ado, it's time for the introduction. Before hopping into the aspects of the game itself, we need to cover a few things about the strategy guide. It is important for you as viewers to know the direction of the guide and what it aims to be prior to viewing. For the strategy guide, I went ahead and played through Renegade Platinum as a hardcore Nuzlocke, so we will write this guide with that rule set in mind. If you're unfamiliar about hardcore Nuzlocke rules, I'll include a video in the description below to help you learn about it. However, casual runs can also use this guide as they will most likely have less constraints than a hardcore Nuzlocke. This guide aims to help anyone and everyone, no matter what prior Pokemon experience they have or how they choose to play the game. For the purposes of this guide, I went ahead and caught every Pokemon available when available in Renegade Platinum. Well, just kidding. Why would you do that? That's cheating and not Horcrux Nuzlocke rules. Well, every Pokemon run or playthrough is different. Catching every Pokemon accounts for all the possibilities of Pokemon you as viewers may have at your disposal at any specific battle. So if you see a lot of Pokemon in my boxes throughout this footage, mind your business. All right, now it's time to talk about what our guide will cover. Number one, boss battles. We will be breaking down and analyzing every major boss battle within Renegade Platinum. This includes gym leaders, rivals, team galactic fights, and other boss battles along your journey. In these breakdowns, there will be an overview of each boss battle where we will discuss general information about the fight. After this, we will break down and analyze each Pokemon on the boss's team. This could include movesets, items, how to approach battling this Pokemon, etc. If there is a quote cheese strat or an easy way to win a battle using exploits, we will cover that as well. We're on strategies in a bit. Lastly, I did the dirty work of plugging in each of the boss's Pokemon into the Renegade Platinum calculator to determine their speed stats in game. All you have to do is check if your Pokemon's speed stats is higher. This will hopefully help a lot of you if you're planning to outspeed the opponent's Pokemon. Number two, items in helpful locations. Renegade Platinum gives you a ton of useful items, TMs, gift mons, and berries throughout the game. Lucky for you, the guide will cover most of their locations. Use all of these to your advantage. Number three, miscellaneous tips. This is basically anything that doesn't fall into number one or number two. This can include delaying encounters, order of events, Pokemon discussions, etc. We could dive into the nitty gritty of this ROM hack, but for the purposes of time, we need to draw the line in the sand somewhere. If I happen to miss a tip or you'd like to discuss something further, drop it in the comments below. I want this video to be a place where we can all collaborate, talk, and discuss our runs about Renegade Platinum. I will not be covering general nuzlocking tips here, as that would severely lengthen the guide. There are also some things that will be implied and maybe not directly mentioned. This would include edging your Pokemon for a boss battle, using battle items that will benefit you in your specific situation, such as a berry to cure a status move or a damage boosting item to secure a kill. This could also include using a super effective move whenever possible and grabbing one encounter per route if you're using hardcore Nuzlocke rules. I truthfully debated whether or not I should cover encounters in this guide, but as of right now, I believe that would make the guide too long. Instead, I will highlight Pokemon where they excel in the boss battles we are covering. The encounter coverage might change or I might just make an entirely separate encounter specific document, but we'll see. Now it's time for some disclaimers. <laughs> We have to recognize that everyone's Pokemon playthroughs are different by a variety of factors. As I stated earlier, I've tried to make this guide cater to as many playthrough possibilities as I can without making each episode of this guide hours long. Some of the factors I've considered while making this guide are the following. Number one, rule sets. Whether it's a casual playthrough or a hardcore plus plus Nuzlocke with different restrictions, everyone plays the game differently. Now, once again, this guide was created with basic hardcore Nuzlocke rules in mind. However, we still want to appeal to casual players as well. Number two, Pokemon knowledge. Everyone's knowledge of Pokemon varies from beginner to master. The guide will try to establish a middle ground between these levels. If you're a beginner and need some help, feel free to drop some questions below in the comments. If you're a Pokemon master, feel free to help people out in the comments below, but please do it in a non-toxic manner. 
Number three, luck or RNG. The last but most important factor to consider while making this guide is in fact everyone's luck or RNG. Everyone's luck and RNG is different. I may get an encounter with great IVs and a good nature where you might get a bad one. Critical hits can happen in some of the most unopportune times. A Pokemon may underperform for me and I might say it's not good, but that Pokemon could do great for you. Encounters, Pokemon IVs, natures, damage ranges, move accuracies, critical hits, you get the idea. They're all different in each and every playthrough. It is all almost impossible to write a strategy guide to match every single possibility in battle. So I don't want to hear, actually this came, my Pokemon died fighting a Pokemon you said it would beat. It's all your fault. Look, luck and RNG happens, and it's a double-edged sword sometimes. It's one of the things that makes all Pokemon playthroughs special and unique. So keep all these factors in mind, and we will try to account for as many possible situations within this guide. Now let's quickly talk about strategies. We will try to cover as many strategies as possible for each of the Pokemon boss battles. There are so many different strategies and ways to win each Pokemon battle. And if we talked about every single one, we'd be here for, well forever. I'm not claiming to be the renegade platinum god or anything like that, nor have I thought of every single strategy possible. So if you have a strategy or tip not mentioned, feel free to drop it in the comments. Do you see my emphasis on dropping stuff in the comments? Once again, I don't want to hear, excuse me, streamer man, you forgot strategy 69.A420B in your guide. You are therefore the worst of people. Let's make this guide and series a safe and collaborative space to discuss, run, plat, and uplift each other rather than a negative or toxic environment. And last Lastly, there are documents, a Renegade Platinum specific battle calculator, and Repel Strats document in the description below. Use them. Make sure you review the official documents provided by Drayano. This includes changes to Pokemon and moves, trainers, Pokemon, route encounters, and much more. The calculator can help you prep for boss battles ahead of time, and the Repel Strats can help you obtain rare Pokemon if you wish to use them. These tools are provided, and I highly recommend you take advantage of them. And just like that, our introduction is complete. Now, let's watch Blissey's health bar go down, beg for Cynthia's mercy, and hop through the distortion world right into this. Your first choice in Renegade Platinum is choosing to play as Lucas or Dawn. Unlike other games, this choice actually carries some weight to it, as Lucas and Dawn's teams are different from each other. You will fight alongside Dawn or Lucas at various points in the game, but more importantly, you will face them in major boss fights. Arguably, many Nuzlockers state fighting against Dawn is more difficult than fighting against Lucas. I've played as both characters, and I lean towards playing as Dawn being the easier option, but I'll let you form your own opinion by pointing you towards the docs for the full team breakdowns. That link is in the description below. So, in conclusion, if you'd like the easier route, pick Dawn, but if you want a challenge, pick Lucas. I wouldn't stress out too much about this choice, but just know it carries some weight. Choosing a starter is a key decision in Renegade Platinum. Don't worry because you'll gain access to the other two starters you don't pick shortly after this, so you won't technically miss out on any of them. Now with that being said, the real consequences of this action is which starter you inevitably give Barry and Dawn or Lucas. The starters work in a rock paper scissors fashion. Barry will always choose the starter with the type advantage versus yours. This inevitably leaves Dawn or Lucas with the starter not chosen, which will always have the type disadvantage versus yours. You will fight Barry more times than Dawn or Lucas throughout your adventure. Therefore, it would be in our best interest to force Barry to pick the weakest starter here. And remember, we have access to the other starters in Sandgem Town. Now, you could debate what the best starter is, but ideally we want to force Barry to pick the worst starter, which is unfortunately Piplup. To do this, we will grab Chimchar. Look, I love Piplup and Empoleon, but the Chimchar and Turtwig lines are miles ahead of Piplup and Empoleon in Renegade Platinum. Infernape is one of the best Pokemon in the game due to its high speed, impressive move pool, and its ability to be a mixed attacker. Torterra is a great physically defensive tank and has access to the hidden ability Shell Armor, which means Torterra can never be crit. Empoleon has a great defensive typing and is a good Pokemon, but Infernape and Torterra are simply too good to give to Barry, unless you want the challenge. Lastly, Empoleon's hidden ability Vital Spirit doesn't really improve Empoleon's impact on the game, whereas Iron Fist on Infernape and Shell Armor on Torterra are game changers. I highly recommend saving and resetting for a Shell Armor Turtwig if your rule set allows it. You can reset for Iron Fist Chimchar as well, but I would say Shell Armor Turtwig is a must, so save your game before picking up Turtwig. Shortly after entering Sandgem Town, we will enter the Professor's Lab. After some dialogue, we can access the briefcase at the 
the top right of the lab. This is where the starters we did not pick earlier are located. Make sure you pick them up if your rule set allows it. Lastly, we need to go home and say goodbye to mom. Mom will give us a free Eevee for our adventure. Once again, you can technically reset for a good nature or good IVs here. You can technically do this for all gift Pokemon throughout the game if your rule set allows it. Now we are ready for our first official boss battle. The first Lucas or Dawn fight is shortly after Sandgem Town. This fight is honestly very straightforward, considering Dawn or Lucas's only Pokemon is the Sinnoh starter with the type disadvantage against ours at level 9. Level up your starter and you should easily beat this battle. Welcome to Jubilife City, and there is a lot to do, so strap yourself in. First, we need to go to the trainer school in order to progress the plot. Grab the scope lens while you're here, and you can get the hidden power TMs after battling the two students in the top right of the school. Lastly, the farmer girl in the school will also give you a free baby Pokemon egg, which is very valuable this early in the game. Now, I want to mention something if you play with a no duplicate rule set like a traditional hardcore Nuzlocke. One of the potential egg options here is a Togepi. You will get a guaranteed Togepi later from Cynthia in Eterna City. Thus, getting a Togepi in the trainer school would essentially be a waste, as you are guaranteed one very soon. To avoid this situation entirely, just save your game before talking to the farm girl. You can always reload your save if the hatched Pokemon happens to be a Togepi. There's a small chance of this happening, but it's possible, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned it. With that out of the way, head to the Pokemon Center and battle the reporters. Once you defeat them, they will give you the Kanto starters, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. The Kanto starters received some tweaks, so I highly recommend checking the documents for those changes. After this, go to the tall apartment building in east of Jubilife City to pick up the Quick Claw. Now head west and go to the Jubilife TV building and talk to the girl with the headband. She will give you the facade TMs. Continue further west until you enter the gate. There will be a fisherman inside that will give you the old rod. Keep going west outside of the gate to Route 218 and pick up the Water Pulse TMs. It is recommended we use the old rod we just got to fish for an encounter here considering the other encounters aren't available until after we get Surf much later in the game. Finally, head north of Jubilife to Ravaged Path. Inside, grab the Rock Tomb TMs and the Expert Belt, one of the best held items in the game. With all this completed, we are now ready to fight Barry. This berry fight can be challenging if you are not prepared. The main challenge of this fight is Barry's Munchlax, but more on that in a bit. His first Pokemon is a level 10 Starly that has a speed stat of 20. Try to resist its stab wing attack and normal type moves if you can. Any of the electric types available, or preferably rock types, can make quick work of Starly. If you don't have an electric or a rock type Pokemon, a physically defensive Pokemon can do well here. Also, we just picked up the Rock Tomb TMs from Ravaged Path. Utilize them against the Starly. Barry Barry's ace will either be a Chimchar, Turtwig, or Piplup depending on your initial starter choice. There are a ton of Pokemon available to counter whichever starter he has, most notably the Kanto starters we just picked up and the other Sinnoh starters we picked up from Sandgem Town. Outside of those, there is a good mix of grass, water, flying, and rock type Pokemon available on the surrounding routes. If you end up fighting Piplup with a grass type Pokemon, watch out because it does get peck at level 11. Now for those speed stats. Chimchar's speed is 21, Turtwig's speed is 15, and Piplup's speed is 17. Outspeed them if you can. The last and most problematic Pokemon on Barry's team is his level 10 Munchlax. I have lost many Pokemon to this Munchlax, and it can hurt you if you're not prepared. What's even more annoying is Barry does have a potion, which could keep Munchlax alive for longer than you'd expect. Overall, Munchlax is a slow, chonky boy with a resounding 9 speed. Munchlax is a good special defensive tank, but has weak physical defense, and that's what we want to exploit. Munchlax's move pool includes Stab Tackle, Rock Tomb for coverage, Amnesia to boost its already absurd special defense, and the real demon move, Metronome. A physically defensive Pokemon with good attack will tank, tackle, and Rock Tombs well, while essentially making Amnesia useless. But even if we prepare well for the other three moves, we are still ultimately at the grace of Metronome's RNG. With that being said, pray you get good luck with Metronome, and use the exploits we talked about earlier to take down Munchlax fast. With Barry defeated, it's time to head to Orberg City, but there's a few things to grab along the way. The Silk Scarf, Endure TMs, and Soothe Bell are all on Route 204, the same route we fought Barry. Next in Orberg Gate, the hiker will greet you and give you an HM. Orberg Gate's bottom floor contains the Flash and the Brick Break TMs. You'll have to use the bike to navigate the bottom floor. Wait, we have a bike? Orberg City has a lot to do as well. First, head to the Pokemon Center and battle the reporters again. This time, they will give you access to the Hoenn starters, just 
just in time before Rourke. After this, head north to Route 207 and grab the Hardstone. Now we have to progress the plot so Rourke can go back to the gym. He is south in Orberg Mine. On your way, stop by this house, which is home to no other than Stephen Stone, the real Hoenn champion. Not you, Wallace. Mr. Stone will give you a free Beldum as a gift. Yeah, a free Beldum. This game is awesome. Now into the mine to find Rourke. The muscle band, a great held item, is in here, so do not miss it. Rourke is in the bottom portion of the mine, chilling next to some rocks. If you talk to him, he will tell you some lore and give you a free evolution stone. Now a word of warning. It is very easy to fat finger through the Rourke dialogue and accidentally pick the water stone. I've done this many times before, so take your time through the dialogue and pick the stone you actually need. If any of your encounters so far are stone evos, I recommend you pick the stone that benefits them. Having a fully evolved Pokemon going into the first gym is absolutely busted. But also remember, we got a free Eevee from Mom. All of the evolutions are stone based in Renegade Platinum, which is a very nice quality of life change. I usually choose the evolution based on the nature or the IVs of the Eevee I received. For example, if your Eevee has a good special attacking nature or IVs, you could pick a special attacking evolution. You could also pick the type of evolution that your box of Pokemon is currently lacking. These are some things to consider, but honestly, you can't go wrong with any of the evolutions. All of them got moveset buffs, and a few got base stat changes you can find in the documentation. I personally picked Umbreon from my initial playthrough, but honestly, they're all fantastic. With the Evolution Stone obtained and Rourke back at the gym, we are ready to fight for our first gym badge. Now it's time for Rourke and our first gym battle. First, let's talk a general overview about Rourke's team. Rourke's team of rock types are almost all physical attackers with great physical defense. Rourke also loves to utilize Sandstorm. Starting in Gen 4, Sandstorm boosts the special defense of rock type Pokemon by 50%. This boost will actually make a difference with how we approach some of Rourke's Pokemon. We will discuss these in the full team breakdown. With the boost in mind, it is key to keep track of whether Sandstorm is up during the battle. Half of Rourke's team knows notably share a dual typing of rock and ground. This makes them very vulnerable to grass and water attacks, and something we will take advantage of. Rourke's ace is level 16. Level up your Pokemon to level 16 and edge them to level 17 if you play to level cap rules. Any of the stone evolution or friendship evolution Pokemon will excel in this battle. Like we stated earlier, having a fully evolved Pokemon with high base stats this early is extremely overpowered. Lastly, we picked up the water pulse TMs and the brick break TMs earlier. You should check TM compatibility with your Pokemon while prepping for each battle. You never know when these moves could save you. And now, it's time for the cheese strat. If I told you Roar could be defeated with a single Pokemon, would you believe me? Yes, Roar can easily be defeated by utilizing setup moves and sweeping his entire team. This strategy exploits Roar's Nose Pass, whose moves are Stealth Rock, Thunder Wave, Shock Wave, and Sandstorm. Do you see the weakness? Nose Pass has no attacking moves to hit ground type Pokemon. Roar will not swap despite this, giving you the chance to set up on Nose pass for free. The four ground types available with setup and sweep potential are the following. Number one, Geodude with Rock Polish and Defense Curl. Number two, Onyx with Curse. Number three and four, Sandshrew and Fampy both with Defense Curl. Geodude or Onyx would be my preferred Pokemon here. Rock Polish and Defense Curl on Geodude will make you faster than Rourke's team while still making you bulky. On the other hand, Onyx with Curse will raise your attack and your defense at the expense of making you slower than Rourke's team. The only lose condition with this strat is unfortunately a critical hit, which will bypass your defense boosts. With some luck and no crits, you'll be able to sweep through all or the majority of Rourke's team. I know, it's a cheap way to win, but look, I'm giving you the sauce. Whether you dip your chicken nuggies in there is on you. But this thing, I don't have any of those four Pokemon, or my rule set doesn't allow me to use setup moves. Oh, don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's break down each of Rourke's team and how to approach battling them. Rourke's first Pokemon is Nosepass. Nosepass has a speed stat of 18. As stated earlier, Nosepass cannot hit ground type Pokemon, so they are the preferred counter. If you don't have a ground type, a grass type preferably with good special defense is probably the next best thing as they resist shockwave. Nosepass is a better physically defensive tank than it is a special defensive tank. However, if Nosepass uses Sandstorm, it will boost 
increased its special defense, therefore making it a better special defensive tank within Sandstorm. This is one of those situations where Sandstorm is actually going to make a difference, so keep in mind whether Sandstorm is up. Using HP recovery moves can also be beneficial to prevent Sandstorm from chipping you down too much. Lastly, Nosepass holds a smooth rock, which will increase Sandstorm's duration from a standard 5 turns up to 8 turns max. Next on Rourke's team is a Bonsly with a speed stat of 12. Bonsly is carrying a Rindo Berry, which reduces the damage of super effective grass type moves by 50%. That being said, avoid using grass types on Bonsly if you can. Bonsly's moveset is Stealth Rock, Brick Break, Rollout, and Defense Curl. This Bonsly loves using Defense Curl to boost its already high physical defense and the power of Rollout. Use a physically bulky special attacker to exploit Bonsly's weak special defense. Even with Sandstorm boost up, Bonsly still has weak special defense. Take down Bonsly quick before it sets up too many defense curls or stacks rollouts. Geodude is next on the list with a speed stat of 15. This Geodude has a lot of attacking potential, especially with its item the Expert Belt which boosts the damage of super effective moves by 20%. On top of this, it's packing a moveset of Stab, Bulldoze, and Rock Tomb, as well as Fire Punch and Thunder Punch for coverage. Geodude's weak spot is its terrible 30 base special defense and its common 4 times weaknesses to water and grass. However, its elemental punches for coverage plus the expert belt will make life hard for water and grass types. The key to defeating this Geodude is trying to predict an incoming move and make a good defensive swap. From there, I recommend trying to make a safe swap to a Pokemon that can outspeed Geodude and one-shot it with a special attacking move. Like I've been preaching, special attacking water and grass types will work great here, as well as a physically defensive Pokemon to help you with defensive swaps. Be especially careful with this Geodude and try to take it down exploiting its weaknesses. Rorik's Onyx is not to be underestimated by any means. With its speed buff, it has a speed stat of 36, making Onyx the fastest Pokemon on Rorik's team. Did I also mention it gets an attack buff in Renplat? On top of these buffs, it also carries a muscle band, boosting the power of physical moves by 10%. Its moveset is the following, Stab Rock Tomb, Bulldoze, Sandstorm, and Stealth Rock. The Despite all this, like Geodude, Onyx has an abysmal special defense stat and a 4 times weakness to water and grass, making this the weakness to target. There are very few Pokemon that can outspeed Onyx at this point in the game, so I recommend using a physically defensive Pokemon that can go mono e mono with it instead. I also wouldn't recommend using physical attacks against Onyx as it has 160 base defense, unless you absolutely have to. In conclusion, use a special attacking physically bulky water or grass type Pokemon to hopefully one-shot and defeat Onyx. On to Larvitar, which rounds out Rourke's Pokemon sharing the dual typing of rock and ground. Larvitar has a speed stat of 23. Try to outspeed it if you can. More on that in a bit. Larvitar's item, the Flame Orb, and its ability Guts is an extremely devastating combo, boosting its attack by 50%. To utilize this combo, its moveset is Stab Rock Tomb, Bulldoze, Bite, and Protect most notably to proc the flame orb. Luckily for us, Larvitar is four times weak to water and grass. We will exploit this once again. If you can't use a water or grass type here, a physically bulky Pokemon can do well. Larvitar's defense and special defense base stats are the same, so there is no preference to physical or special attacks here. However, this is a situation where Sandstorm boost would matter. So if Sandstorm is up, use physical attacks against Larvitar. Earlier I spoke about outspeeding Larvitar, and here is why. Larvitar's two stab moves can lower your speed stat, and it has the move Bite. This moveset can potentially leave you slower than Larvitar, and at the mercy of Bite Flinch RNG. This potential situation, on top of Guts Boost and Larvitar using Protect so Sandstorm bogs you down, is a recipe for disaster. This situation can be incredibly frustrating, so the way out is to outspeed Larvitar's speed stat of 23 and one-shot it exploiting its four times weaknesses. Lastly, remember Larvitar does lose health every every turn while burned, so it technically can't be on the field forever. Use this information to your advantage and use defensive swaps if you need to wear down Larvitar. Rorik's ace is the final Pokemon on his team, and that is a Kranidos. This fossil is a very scary Pokemon with a whopping 125 base attack stat. This is supplemented with an insane moveset of Zen Headbutt, Stab Rock Tomb, Thunder Punch for coverage, and Scary Face. Kranidos' speed stat is 30, making it Rorik's second fastest Pokemon. 
This speed stat, coupled with speed lowering moves like Scary Face and Rock Tomb, plus Zen Headbutt's flinch chance can leave you hopeless. Despite its monstrous attack, Kranidos is very frail defensively. Its defense and special defense stats are the same due to its hasty nature, so there is no attacking preference unless Sandstorm is up. If this is the case, use physical attacks. Picking a physically defensive Pokemon with the type advantage is your best bet here. And lucky for us, Mr. Stone gave us the perfect counter to this Pokemon. Defeat all of Rorik's Pokemon and you will obtain the Coal Badge. Well guys, that wraps up our first video in the Renegade Platinum Strategy Guide. If you found this guide helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. We will be rolling out new episodes of this guide to help you along your Renegade Platinum journey. If I missed any helpful tips or strategies, drop them in the comments below. Chances are it could help someone out. Lastly, if you want to drop by a live recording of this guide to contribute a strategy, nickname a Pokemon, or for other Nuzlocking and Pokemon content, come join me over on Twitch, weeknights at twitch.tv slash disclaim underscore. I would love to have you guys join my amazing community. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next episode of the Renegade Platinum Strategy Guide.